Let us pray. God of the covenant, in our baptism you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles, that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. spoke to me, a spirit entered into me, and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. And their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are of this house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hardships, 
persecutions and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and, jo and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could, not, he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. But he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went among, out, out among the village, teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed the oil with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. church this morning, I remarked to myself, it has been a long time since I have been in Suffolk County. Having grown up more than a few stones away in North Babylon, Suffolk County in the summertime feels like home. Baltimore, where I live now, is great. I love the ministry that God has called for me to do there, but there is nothing like coming home. So I ask you this morning, friends, to just think for a moment to yourself, not out loud, do not worry. What do you think about when someone mentions your hometown? For me, it's the smell of salt air and a fresh, crisp bagel. Maybe for you, it's the sight of your mother's overabundant garden from childhood or the memory of running through your neighborhood barefoot to get to your grandparents' house. Maybe your hometown holds fond recollections of summer baseball or work walking to a corner store. Many of you, perhaps with just a few coins in hand with your friends. Maybe it's the sound of the creek in your front porch or the recipes that your father would create the familiar smells ruminating from the stove. Maybe you remember how hot and sticky the summers on Long Island can be, or the dozens of times that your back aches from shoveling a midwinter snow. A hometown can communicate comfort and security. There is something about driving on well-traveled streets or walking into a restaurant to see a familiar face. 
there is also a time when you remember who should be in the places that you visit and who is no longer there. There can be a profound warmth in a familiar world. Sometimes, though, hometowns are less the stuff of dreams, they are more the stuff of nightmares. Hometowns can, in opposite, trigger instances of deep trauma, resurrecting decades-old anxieties. Maybe the memories of your hometown are not as comforting. Maybe they are tattered by being chastised for your fashions or lack thereof, dismissed for your beliefs. Maybe your hometown is the place where you first looked evil in the eye or where you were ostracized for who you knew yourself to be, or what you wanted to do with your life, or how you showed up in the world. Hometowns can conjure up all kinds of memories and emotions, and over the years they become saturated with profound importance and meaning, and can sometimes even take on a life of its own. Hometowns can be life affirming or heart-rending and everything in between, like Jesus said. Today, in our gospel text from Mark, where we hear of Jesus returning to his hometown with his very best friends in tow. And for all the pleasant memories that Jesus might have had in his mind's eye, there were, and we hear, some pretty significant challenges as he approached Nazareth. Now, the Gospels, as we read them on Sunday mornings, don't give us much information of Jesus' upbringing. His family picture albums seem to be a little sparse. In fact, after the wise men depart of him, we don't know much about what happened to toddler Jesus. But based on a handful of textural clues, it is safe to assume that Mary and Joseph were devout Jews who trusted in God's plan and provision, and that Jesus would have been the beneficiary of such a faithful upbringing. Remember that scene in scripture where the adolescent Jesus is sitting in the synagogue for three days, resting among the religious leaders asking them questions. That is how you can imagine Jesus' childhood went. Let your imagination fill in the gaps of his formative years, but now, nearly 20 years later, Jesus sets out from his home and invites some working class guys to accompany him. He begins his formal ministry in the chapters that follow. He has seen all of the places. He has traveled in and out of homes and villages and cities around the surrounding area of Galilee, teaching and healing and calling others to a new way of life. Along the way, Jesus utters some foreboding sayings about the kingdom of God and for these lifelong Jews, some near blasphemous statements about Jesus' own relationship with God. Throughout Mark's gospel, he tells of those who witness these things not to speak, for fear that their testimonies might fall into the wrong hands. But word spreads as words are known to do, and people flock to Jesus, either for their own sake or for the sake of another. Some want to be made well in body and mind. Others, it seems, just want to see a miracle happen with their own two eyes. In Mark chapter 5, immediately before the text we get today, crowds congregate to get a glimpse of Jesus casting out demons in the garrisons. Others attend him raising the daughter of a synagogue official and healing a woman with a flow of blood. Jesus has been busy, away from home, but now all roads lead to Nazareth. Surely, Nazareth was a place of some comfort for Jesus. Surely, it held smells and sights and sounds that forced him to stop and think of playing in dust-filled alleys, forcing him to stop and think of sitting down to a Sabbath meal with 
with his family. But whatever nostalgia flooded back was quickly stemmed by a demon of a different sort. Jesus names it as a lack of faith, a collective inability to see the very hand of God at work because of past assumptions. Deacon Tanya read, where did this man get all of this? Is this not the carpenter son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. If a hometown is a comfortable place, it's understandable why a prophet would not be welcome there. Prophets are not dictated by comfort or custom, but driven by divine obligation. Hometowns are places often bound and sometimes paralyzed by precedent. Prophets come to unsettle, to shake things up, to startle a people into new ways of seeing the world, and to demand that they cease their spiritual backsliding. Hometowns occasionally toe the line of the status quo. Prophets disrupt the status quo, speaking light and life into creeping darkness of what has come to be known as the new normal, or what is natural. Thinking about your hometown is an exercise in thinking about the complexities of being human. Our myriad everyday habits, some good, some not so good. It is about appreciating, appreciating the intricate beauties of the place that we have once called home. But it is also about the ways in which we insulate our lives from failure, from fear, and from those people. What are the hometowns we have created for ourselves is the question. Where are the places of comfort that have brought us this grace? Where are the sealed off places where we are doing our best to insulate ourselves from what has been? To curate a nice, clean, ideal, untouched life. It is understandable why we would be hesitant to let Jesus into either of those spaces. Why we would want to disrupt that which is good and cozy, especially in a world where good news is difficult to come by. Alternatively, why would we allow ourselves to be stretched and challenged and our lives to be undone willingly with all the awkwardness and unease that that can create in us? Remember, prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. It is uncomfortable to let a prophet's presence wreak havoc in the corners of your heart and in your own house and among your own kin, but letting God speak into what we think is the warmest and coziest places of our lives actually might increase our capacity for love of both God and our neighbor if we let it. If we allow Jesus' prophetic presence to actually sink in, something like scales might fall from our eyes, encouraging us to see those who were for the longest time called invisible. We might start to witness walls of hostility and division come down or cease to be built in the first place if we let Jesus into our mind's eye. We might learn to welcome those who we at once time called unsafe or other or criminal. What might it look like for us to be disrupted by Jesus the prophet here and now? There are no short answers. Do not worry, this is not a quiz. Life is different. And we each experience grace and healing uniquely, thanks be to God. But I would wager that it might look like taking stock of how things have always been done and exploring rather how the church can proclaim and enact hope in transformative ways, bringing our nation 
to such this communication, this dream, this vision that Jesus has for us is not easy. But doing so can bring about blessed fruit and leave us like Jesus did to the disciples to go and do likewise, to bring nothing but the good news to share with those who are in need of this message that all might be astonished by God's work and the words. In Jesus' name, amen. Merciful God, 
Eternal God, you gather us into your house of many dwelling places. We give you thanks for our faithfully departed. Inspire us by their lives of faith until with them we rest forever at our journey's end. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right in our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who in the night he was betrayed to bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of you. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Oh
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and 